A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ra'in Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Dear viewers, Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh And welcome to Ethics of Life Where we discuss matters of akhlaq, morals and ethics In order to reach full human potential Today inshallah we will be discussing humbleness and humility How we can reach a stage where we are humble beings Where we are not affected by arrogance In order to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is something we look to implement in our day-to-day -day lives. But we all agree, living in a Western world, it may be difficult. Living in a world which idolizes materialism and status. Is it easy to be humble? And what does it truly mean to be a humble person? Joining me today, we have none other than Hujat al-Islam, Dr. Sheikh Muhammad Ali Shawani. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum wa Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. Sheikh, just to introduce the topic, um, we talk, of course, about humbleness in the Holy Quran. It's mentioned in Hadith. It's consistently mentioned. But what does it actually mean to be a truly humble person? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. To be humble has different levels. To begin with, to be humble means not to behave okay. out of arrogance. Hmm. Okay? Not to behave out of arrogance. Hmm. Maybe there is arrogance inside, but at least you try to watch yourself and not let that arrogance lead to any words or any action or even gesture which is expressing arrogance okay so maybe i feel i am very special i'm very important i have had lots of achievements i am better than other people this is arrogance okay but to begin with it's very difficult to get rid of this Okay, so we say, try to be humble. At-tawadu. At-tawadu means try to be humble. Okay. Okay, so even if still you think in your heart, in yourself, you know, you think you are better, but at least don't say anything that would suggest this to people. Don't underestimate people. Don't look at them in a bad way. You know, like, you know, humiliating them, insulting Very them, derogatory. underestimating yeah. them, or any gesture. But little by little, this humbleness becomes a permanent quality and not just something that you observe in your actions. It becomes a quality. I see. So your heart becomes humble, not your words and actions only show humbleness, okay? And that is when you have khashya here, you have khushu here. Khashya and khushu are very much related to each other because khushu is humbleness in the heart and brings a kind of softness, which is very close to fear, but it's different from fear out of, you know, uh, um, possibility of something harming you or attacking you. It's a fear which is very healthy. You know, when you are in front of a great personality, for example, if you are in front of a very holy person, a very knowledgeable person, in front of, for example, your marja, yeah, you have khashya. This mm. is a kind of fear, but not a bad fear, you know. It's, Fear in the sense that you are very careful. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to do anything wrong, anything rude, anything disrespectful. Yeah. But it's very positive because you want this to carry on. Yeah. You wish you could be there, you know, every day with him. Yeah? yeah. It's a kind of awe that you have towards that person. Yes. Quran says, for example, ulama with respect to God, they have this khashya. Okay? And also Quran says, inna salat but you know, seek assistance from prayer and patience, and it is difficult except for those who have humility in their heart. So, if you manage 
to first control yourself and not let your arrogance push you to any word or action or gesture, little by little, you can then fix the problem deeper and try to replace arrogance with humbleness. I see. I see. Then you don't need to pressurize yourself to be humble. You become automatically humble. It becomes a quality of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And this is why in some mystical literature, uh, we use the concept of poverty. Yeah. Because you feel you have nothing to become proud of yourself. If you are proud, you are proud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are proud, you are proud of what Allah has made you to achieve, but you are never proud of yourself, of yourself independently. Yeah. Okay? You feel empty. You feel absolute reliance on God. You feel you are not even a shadow compared to God. You know, we cannot even say yeah, we are shadow. Yeah. Yeah. But we can see ourselves as a mirror mm. and see in mirror blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Would ever a mirror becomes, you know, proud and arrogant and say to the other mirror that I am reflecting a flower, you are reflecting, for example, a piece of wood. No. no. No mirror feels, you know, proud of itself because of what it shows. So, we have to be reflecting radiations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beauties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time remember that you are a mirror. Mm. Yes, you can be happy that you have exposed yourself and put yourself in the right encounter with God. Not that you think it's coming from you. Mm. Okay? So, a real humbleness, a real humility, is when you naturally become humble. Okay. Not that you watch yourself and pressurize yourself to be humble, which is good. To begin with, it's good. Everyone should try that. But it should become very natural. Mm, I see. Yeah? Uh, one of the expressions that we have in Arabic is uh, to be like soil, okay. turab. Turab means soil. Yeah? What is the quality of soil? Growth. Ah. Soil always is on, on, on the, the lowest the level. You yes. cannot, you know, put the soil in the air. I see. Soil goes it's down the floor, yeah. and everyone puts his feet, feet on, on the, the soil. Oh, I see, okay. okay. Yeah? Yeah. Everyone, therefore, is comfortable with soil. Rumi has beautiful poem. He says, if a king attacks another country, who would be the first targets? And if they manage to conquer, who would be the first people to get rid of? Any person who is outstanding. Mm. Any person who has a position that can be challenging the king or the new you know, ruler who is going to that country. So they will get rid of the other king, prime minister, ministers, commanders. Mm. But if someone is a poor and beggar, it's not, it's not priority. Actually, they will raise them. Not only they don't da damage them, they will raise them because these are the people that in that regime become like I this. See, I see. <laughs> so, Rumi says this is ex our example. In society, when people see arrogant people, everyone wants to get rid of them. If you are working in an office and one of the colleagues is very arrogant, no one is happy, no one is comfortable. Yeah. And if they can do something to get rid of him or send him to another place, <laughs> they will do it. Yeah. But if they see in another office, another department, there is a very humble person. Everyone says, you know, how can we bring him to our office? Mm. Because it's like soil. Everyone loves soil and they know soil is not going to be a challenge. A soil is never going to become a stone that would hit you. Yeah. Yeah? Or injure you. Can anyone injure you with soil? No. So, 
real humbleness is a quality that makes your heart very soft, gives room in your heart to other people, and therefore you become a considerate person. Arrogance makes you forget other people's needs, other people's interests. You think you are the only person who matters. But humbleness makes you understand that every person is important, every object is important. And you try to be very polite and respectful even to the objects that you use. Mm. It's a very important concept. Sheikhna, in this society, um, being humble is a very relative kind of yes. you know, uh, term. And the definition of humbleness, I think, is, is, is dependent on who you are, how you see it. I think in this society as well, we play a lot of importance, or the society in general plays importance on, like you said, status, um, and, and the, pover the, the ones in poverty and the ones who are rich. And it becomes a very material society where we, where we like to have flashy cars and nice clothes, yeah. a big house. Now, where does one draw the line? Where, do, where does someone become extravagant um, as opposed to maybe just living within their means? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, actually, in some uh, ethical systems, Humbleness is not receiving enough attention. Okay. You know, for religious uh, people, it's much easier to understand the significance of humbleness. But some people who are uh, not following religious outlook and they don't have God, for yeah. them to understand the significance of humbleness is very difficult. But still it's possible in some forms of spiritualities, which are secular, but not everyone. Okay. So. The focus on success is good. The focus on having a status, position, achievement to flourish, to excel is good. But it has to be done in the way that would not lead to arrogance. I see. It should be done in the way that it leads to humbleness. Okay. Because people unfortunately make mistakes. They think in order to become excellent, in order to become successful, they need to forget humbleness and push themselves to the position that they don't have. Okay. Or yeah. bring other people down. Or tell everyone what you have achieved, you know, with pride. Or drive a car which is very expensive or have jewelries, you know, and watch which is very expensive, you know, clothes which is very expensive. Say people that, you know, I send my child, you know, for example, to a very expensive school or college. Yeah. This actually is arrogance. And this shows that this person suffers from self-esteem. I see. It is opposite to what some people think. If you have self-esteem, you don't need to say you are good by showing your car or jewelry. Oh, you are to be the most valuable thing, not what you carry or what you drive. Yeah. And this is something that people should judge. You cannot even you know, show yourself and say, yeah. look at my achievements, <laughs> look at my akhlaq. <laughs> Let people see in you the value. Yeah. And this is then the beautiful connection between humbleness and respect. You know, we have hadith. Man rafa'ahullah. If you are trying to be humble for the sake of God, not for the sake of, you know, being praised by people, you genuinely try to be humble, Allah will elevate you. Allah will raise you. Hmm. Okay? So, let us all try to achieve that humbleness inside and gain something valuable inside. But Sheikh, like you said, I mean, in this society, people link humbleness to low self-esteem. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm sure there are viewers who are perhaps thinking, well, can I be humble and confident at the same exactly. time? Let's say, for example, I have a job interview. Yeah. 
or I have to public speak, or I have to be a teacher and teach a class. Some may argue that to be humble, you wouldn't want to put yourself out there. You wouldn't want to be in a public position, perhaps. Can one be humble and confident at the same time, or is there a clash, contradiction? Exactly, yes. Actually, I believe real confidence comes with humbleness. Okay, so they complement each other. Yes, but okay. if someone is arrogant, he may look like confident, Okay. but he is not confident. Those who are arrogant, mm. actually they feel not secure. Yeah. And because they don't have that self-esteem, they don't have that self-regard, they feel they lack, then they want to do something extra to hide that. I see, I see. You know? Yeah. For example, if I am a very fearful person, Okay, and I am always worried. Mm. Then I may carry lots of knives and you know, you know, guns with me to give you the impression that I am always ready for fighting. But indeed, it means I am a fearful person. Yeah. And I'm trying to hide that with carrying knives and this. Yeah. Yeah. A person who is brave doesn't need to say I am brave. You can see bravery in him. A person who is knowledgeable doesn't need to tell you he's knowledgeable. When you listen to him, you realize he's knowledgeable. I see. But the person who says, you know, I am the most knowledgeable person, you realize that he is not. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You know, in Farsi we say, Moshk anas ke khud bebuyat, na anas ke attar beguyat. If you want to buy, Mesk, you know, in Farsi we say, you know, Moshk. It should have fragrance, beautiful mm. fragrance. It, so it should tell you that I am Mesk. Yes. Not that the perfume seller said, this is very good. It smells well. It's not enough for me that the seller says it smells well. I have mm. to uh, smell. Be the judge yourself. Yeah. yeah. So. Those who are humble, they don't need to show off. They no, don't need to gain significance from external things. Mm. Those who are humble, actually, you are attracted to them because of their humbleness. Yes. So it's very actually sad that people think in order to be uh, accepted to get job or whatever, they should not be humble. No, we say you have to be humble, but at the same time, confident. You can be both at the same you time. You can be both. And okay. actually, this is the best way to have uh, confidence, to be humble. You can be very successful. You can be very organized. You can be very brave, but at the same time being humble. I because see. humbleness is not only between you and people. Humbleness is between you and God. If you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humble, with the creation of Allah you are humble, with other people you are humble, then you become strong. Okay. So your humbleness would improve your relation with God and with everyone. And definitely you would be successful. Sheikh, being, having humility or being humble in, in all aspects of our life is of course very important. Um, I think many people would also say that not just in jobs or in, um, or in social circles, but particularly within marriage, when you, when you join two lives and you become one unit as, mm. as, as spouses and you live together and you have children and a family together, that times can be sometimes very difficult. Um, you can have difference of opinion and that one should be humble in these situations as well as being patient and so on. How important is it within marriage itself to have humility and humbleness? Yes. Actually, marriage cannot work without humbleness. Because if you are arrogant, then you become selfish. Because you say, I am more important I and see. I want everything for myself. Mm. You think you are very special and everyone should serve you. So this is going to make marriage into big trouble. 
But if you are humble, means you don't see that you deserve more than the other party. Mm. Either you try to give the other party more or at least equal. You will be concerned with your comfort and the other party's comfort, your prosperity and the other person's party's prosperity. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So humbleness brings fairness, brings consideration. But I can say it can go even further. If you manage to see the other party first, if you're humble, yes. and then yourself, give preference to the other party. When someone is married, should change mentality of singles. I see. When you marry, you have to tell yourself from today, I enjoy from a delicious food in two ways. One way is my old way, one is new way. I see. The old way was when I eat a delicious food I enjoy. The new way is when my husband or wife eats delicious food I enjoy. Oh, I see. Hmm. So, if we both have delicious food to eat, I get double pleasure. Because you care for them and you, yes. you want the best for them. And if we have shortage, yeah. I prefer that other part oh, of I me see. has the food and I will get more pleasure than I eat and the other person doesn't have. If we have to do something, if it is difficult, I do it. If it's mm. enjoyable, he or she would do it. I see, I see. If one of us has to remain to look after, for example, family or business or child, whatever, yeah. I offer, I stay, you go. You want to visit your parents. I want to visit my parents, but you go. Okay? So, if we are humble, first we become fair and give equal treatment to both sides. But if you are more humble, you would realize that that person deserves more. But without suffering. If you suffer, it still means you see something here, you know, uh, special, it's oh, a problem. Yeah. Humble people don't suffer. This is very important. You know, those who are not humble, they think humble people suffer. Mm. Because they see people equal to them, you know, they don't want, you know, to be a special. But actually, humble people don't suffer. They enjoy. Mm. When they see anyone get success, they enjoy. Anyone is promoted, they enjoy. They don't see this as a challenge to them. So, we need for a successful marriage to gain this fairness and humbleness. Sheikhna, just as a final question, um, we talked about marriage, how working together will bring that fairness and the humbleness, but also build love together. But um, it's mentioned, of course, that Allah will test the believers according to you know, their piety and their situations. How can we correlate humbleness and the tribulations and the, the tests Allah gives us? And how can we kind of build ourselves to be humble people through these tests that God gives us? Yes. Unfortunately, many times we human beings take things for granted. When we have always had something, we think this is ours and it's going to remain always for us. When you lose you realize that in the first place it was not yours. If it was yours, you could have saved it. Yes. So you realize it was not yours. It was just amana. Okay. So if we never have any death, we think all people are going to be remain for us forever. But death makes you humble by giving you a lesson that you don't own people. I see, I see. You become ill, you realize you don't own health. Mm. You become poor, you don't own rich. You lose your job, even if you are very qualified, you work hard, but it still happens, you lose your job. You realize that it was not you. It's not in our hands, yeah. Okay. So, when 
we have a tragedy. This tragedy helps us getting rid of arrogance. Okay. Makes our heart soft. And you know, softness and humbleness, as I said, are very much related, like you yes. know, soil. Yes. So it makes your heart soft, and then you can review your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relation with people. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your relation improves because now you start thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you have. And for what you have lost, you will be thankful that at least before that you had it. Mm. Yeah? If I lose my child, okay, it's sad, but at least I should be thankful that I had that child had in child. the first place that I now see. I am losing. I <laughs> okay? If I ha lose my parents, God forbids, it's sad, but I should be thankful that, alhamdulillah, I had them for many years with me. Yes. I didn't yeah. lose them before birth, for example. So, your relation with Allah would change into a relation of gratitude, which is very good, Gratitude of a person who is suffering. I see. Okay. Allahumma laka alhamdu hamda shakirina laka ala musabihim. But also your relation with people. Because now when you look at people, you don't take them for granted. If Nawuzubillah, God forbid, I lose one of my child or my parents, then I should appreciate those that I have more. I see. Okay. Yeah? If I have problem in one aspect of health, then there are 99 other aspects of the health that I have them and I should yes. be grateful. Yeah. So it changes your life into a life which is filled with appreciation. Mm. Appreciation of whatever is available. I so see. a mu'min when he's faced with suffering would become more grateful more appreciative and therefore more successful because give everything 100% attention and appreciation. But those who think, take things for granted, they think they are the only people who matter. As soon as human beings see that they have no need, then they may become inordinate. So, Tragedies save you from becoming inordinate, from becoming ta'ud, mm -hmm. like Pharaoh, that became inordinate. Mm. So there is great benefit that we may take, if we are careful, from suffering, from problems, from difficulties, from challenges. Sheikh, no, thank you for your time and thank okay, you to the viewers pleasure. for watching. We pray, inshallah, that we can build a community of humility and humbleness. Inshallah. And inshallah, we can continue to serve inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.